I'm Grant with Downtime Media and today I'm going to show you how to make this computer desk with lights. So I started out by drawing the general look and shape of the desk I wanted to build. I had three things in mind, enough table space for my laptop, audio interface, and record player, as well as a shelf for my guitar amp and another shelf for record storage and I wanted it to fit in the existing space of my room without having to move anything around. After that, I started making my cut list. I decided to make the desk 54 inches long, 20 inches deep, 29 inches tall, and with about a one inch edge on all sides. I'm making everything out of scrap wood, so I had plywood for the top, sides, and shelves, and two by fours for everything else. Here's the general shape I want for the desk, and here's the complete cut list. You can pause here and check it out, but it's also in the description. Things will make more sense as the video goes on and you can see exactly what I'm doing. I took this plywood off an old ski rail and I'm going to use it for the desktop. It's 5 eighths of an inch thick. I started by gathering all the wood that I needed, specifically the 2x4s. We were doing our kitchen so we had scrap wood left over, so here I am prying apart the nailed together 2x4s and removing the nails. And I made the mistake of putting my top heavy tripod on our makeshift plywood table and when wood is bumping around, not good. Oh no. No, 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 no. My lens broke off my camera and the shoe mount on the light snapped. Not fun. I put the tripod on the floor and put on my other lens and kept going. After I had the 2x4s apart and the nails all out, I started measuring the wood for the connector frame. If you look back at the plans, I made a 31 inch long, 18 inch deep frame to connect the desktop to the amp cabinet. Once I had my marks, I chopped them on the miter saw. I cut two 18 inch pieces and two 28 inch pieces and then laid them out into position. At first, I had a front piece that would lay flat at the front of the table, but I decided to scrap it. Next, I started drilling my holes and screwing the pieces together. If I'd used wood glue throughout this project, my desk would be a lot sturdier, but I didn't mind. I used a clamp to hold the edges tight while I drilled and screwed in the middle piece. After that, I measured and cut my leg pieces, three 29 inch long boards that will be ripped in half later, two 17 inch boards that will be the base of the amp cabinet, and six 15 inch boards that will be the horizontal depth supports. I didn't cut the two horizontal leg supports on the left side of the desk because I wasn't sure how big I wanted it to be due to the late addition of the frame. Here's what I have so far, the connector frame, my support pieces, and my leg pieces. I went and pulled out my table saw to rip down my leg pieces. I set the guide to the exact middle of the 2x4 and then the blade to just above the 2x4. I ripped down my three leg pieces to make six pieces of equal size. I took my leg pieces and laid them out in the frame and decided that I was going to use a 14 and a half inch horizontal support on the left leg and then drilled and screwed it together. I set the bottom of the lower 2x4 six inches off the ground. I also decided to screw it to the outside of the frame and not to the inside so I could position it wherever I wanted. Then I laid out my other leg pieces and put the two 15 inch supports between them and drilled and screwed. A clamp made this whole process very easy and precise. I did the same thing for the other cabinet leg. After that, I measured up 18 and 3 eighths of an inch from the top of the bottom 2x4 to figure out where to put my record shelf supports. I messed up here because my amp isn't sitting on the 4 inch side of the 2x4, but instead the 2 inch side of the flat 2x4 that will connect the bottom of the cabinet. I also measured for where I wanted the top of the 2x4 to sit, and I drilled and screwed it to the center of the 2x4. It ended up working out anyway, so it wasn't a big deal. Then I started to assemble the cabinet frame. I clamped the 17 inch 2x4 to the table, then clamped the frame leg to the table up next to the 2x4. Then I drilled and screwed it together. I flipped it around and did the same for the other side. I did the same process for connecting the left leg to the support frame using clamps. I decided to drill and screw the leg to the outside of the frame so I could position it where I wanted. I then took the cabinet and frame and flipped them over and next to each other. I clamped them again and drilled and screwed. Make sure you pay attention to which side of the frame you put the legs on or it may come out backwards. After that, I flipped the frame over and everything looked right and it felt sturdy. I picked it up and carried it down to my basement for some sanding and a coat of paint. I got out my orbital palm sander and a 120 grit pad and started sanding all the wood that would be exposed. 
I made sure to sand every bit of wood that might come in contact with me. Then I got out a can of white paint, mixed it up, and started painting. I wanted this desk to look kind of worn and like street art, so I purposefully did a sloppy job of painting. Then I got out some old stencils and different colors of spray paint and did some random stenciling around the frame. While I let the frame dry, I went and measured my pieces of plywood for the top of the desk. For each board, I measured 54 inches long and 10 inches wide, so that when combined, it would be a total desktop space of 54 inches by 20 inches. Because my table saw is too small and I don't have a crosscut sled, I had to cut my wood with a circular saw. I clamped a 2x6 to my mark so that I could have a perfectly straight edge. Using the factory edge on the wood, I cut off one edge length and then flipped it over and cut the other side, making sure my final width was 10 inches. I did the same process for the other piece of plywood. I dropped my top sheets on the frame to check the fit and it looked good. Next I measured out two 18 and a quarter inch by 17 and 5 8 inch pieces of plywood to use for the shelves of my cabinet. I took this piece to the table saw and cut on my marks. I dropped them into the frame to test the fit and it looked good. I drilled and screwed in the bottom shelf and then got started on the top shelf. I chopped a scrap 1x2 at 17 inches and then took it to the table saw and ripped it in half for the supports under the shelf. I drilled four holes in each piece and started screws in each. My dad helped me hold up the support while I got it level and screwed in one on the end. I re-leveled and screwed in the end and then the rest of the screws. I did the same thing for the other side. Using a clamp to keep the legs together, I laid the top shelf on the support and then drilled and screwed it in. Once I had my shelves in, I got out the palm sander again and rounded over all the raw edges. I also went over the flats of the shelves just to keep everything snag free. Next I measured out my side panels, one at 29 by 18 inches and one at 26 and a half by 18 inches. I cut these out on the table saw, laid them on my frame and drilled and screwed them in. I laid out my top pieces on the frame and got them into the right position, about an inch on each side. Then I started drilling and screwing the top on. I made sure only to sink screws where there was enough wood to do so. I also pre-sunk these holes with a larger drill bit just so that the screw head was well under the top surface of the wood so nothing got snagged or scratched by them. I got out the palm sander again and went over all the edges, rounding them over and smoothing everything out. Because these were old panels to a ski rail, the wood was very warped and rough and it needed a lot of sanding. After that, I grabbed a tack rag and made sure all the dust was off the top surface before sealing. I got out some polyurethane, poured it on the desktop, and using a foam brush, spread it around. I coated the top pretty heavily and then got the side panels, the shelves, and the face of the cabinet. After the polyurethane dried, the desk was basically done. While I waited for my LED lights to come in, I moved my desk up to my room and started testing it out. Everything worked perfectly. So here are the LED lights that I got. This is the power adapter, the wireless RGB color remote, the wireless receiver, and the LED light strip on a spool. I pulled my desk back and started unspooling the light strip. I connected the end of the light strip to the receiver, lining up the arrows. This little bit right here is the actual receiver. You want this to be in an accessible place. Because I didn't have small enough nails or screws, I just electrical taped the receiver box to the back of the cabinet. Then I peeled off the back of the light strip to reveal the adhesive and started sticking the lights to the back of the desk. I looped around a few times in some places because I didn't want to cut the strip and it only produces more light so it didn't hurt. I attached the power adapter and plugged the strip in and light! I moved my desk back into place and figured out all the wiring. As you can see here, the receiver is very picky and will only pick up the remote signal if it is pointed directly at it. And that's it guys, the desk is done. The lights work perfectly and look great against the wall. You can see I have plenty of desk space for my audio interface, my laptop, my record player, as well as a whole cabinet for my guitar amp and a shelf right above it to store tons of records.
that's it. The computer desk is done. The lights are on. Everything's working. The power strip in the back can produce power for my amp, my computer charger, uh, my record player, as well as my phone charger. This was a fairly quick build. It only took me about four hours over, I think, two days. And it really only cost me $10 for the LED lighting. Um, all the other wood that I had was free, uh, scrap wood. One thing that I had to do differently after the desk was done was the adhesive on the back of the LED didn't stay stuck to the table, so I used some electrical tape and just taped the back of the wire along the back side of the table so that it would stay. The great thing about these lights is that because it's wireless, I can be all the way across my room and change the colors or brightness if I want to. There's really a lot of possibilities with these lights. You can even program your own color codes into the remote so that it will play in whatever sequence you want it to. So that's it for this build. I'll see you again soon. Thank you for watching.